Uh, my name is Luisa Ulloa, and my story is called Aroi Maivu. And this is the story about the journey of a young woman through the depths of the Brazilian Amazon in 1981 after losing her father. This is a story of grief, of discovery, of self-discovery, of anthropology, of anthropophagy, and of the silver lining of a loved one's death. If you're not familiar with the term anthropophagy, it simply translates as cannibalism. And in some cultures, like the Tupinamba tribe in Brazil, it is actually an act of respect. These people would eat the flesh of the people they admired, such as brave enemy fighters in war, to absorb their qualities. The term anthropophagy was then taken by the modernists in Brazil as a metaphor to consolidate what it meant to be Brazilian. We ate from the Portuguese culture of our colonizers, from the multiple indigenous cultures that inhabited our lands, and from the multiple African cultures of the men and women who were brought to work as slaves, and from the so many other cultures who sought asylum in our tropical lands. The digestion of all this resulted in the Brazilian culture. As a Brazilian myself, I relish it in the multiplicity. That's a carnival picture. Uh, I am descendant of Portuguese, African, Spanish, and Moors. And as a child, I would devour every book available, not to escape my reality, but to expand its limitations. I never felt lonely. I had a loving mother and many other lives to live. I didn't understand it at the time, but my family's lack of ability to keep track of their ancestors and my curiosity to, to, to know about the little vague information that I had would lead to my appetite to other worlds. Following my love for books, I became a book publisher. Haphazardly, I started working with nonfiction. I believe there is nothing more fantastic than reality, but I admit that I had the grander dream of actually publishing my favorite fiction writers. In the years that followed, I changed my mind. Reality is fantastic, and I wanted to help other people to see that too. During my years in college, digital publishing became a phenomenon. It, I was fascinated, uh, but I thought it was underutilized. Uh, in a world of possibilities, I thought that most people were only seeing one thing, which was the digital form of the analog content. That's when I also became a filmmaker and started feeding off of everything that would be an outlet for my stories. In 2009, I lost my mother. I was about to go on my first international trip after years of saving. This time, I was ready to escape reality and find solace in what was new for me. Of course, this trip changed me. I was now, as I have been wishing, feeding from others, other worlds. It closed in ties with my best friend, expanded my definition of family, and broadened my views. As hard as it was to lose my mother, and it still is, I came to realize I wouldn't be where I am today without it. I would probably trade it all to have her back, but I am proud of who I became and who she taught me to be. Looking at an old photograph album that she had of, of her own trip to the Amazon, I realized she took this trip right, also her first big one, right after her father died. He meant to her what she meant to me, everything. I felt from this album, her trip, and what she might have learned to create my thesis. A fiction firmly grounded in the fantastic, but not always great, realities of Brazil. The story is, sorry, 
The story is told through a series of videos hosted on an interactive website. Each video is a diary entry written by the young woman. Staying true to the modernists, I fell from archive images about the indigenous people. All of them are foreign accounts, many times ethnocentric accounts um, on the tribes. A foreign look to a Brazilian foreign look. Sorry. <laughs> the digestion of those videos reshaped the meaning, and with the help of anthropologists, I attempted to mute the ethnocentric verb, and they became the account of a woman who believed to have lost everything, but came to find something even more important. When the young woman lost her father, she only ate from the provincial, Catholic, and close-minded culture of her small town. That was her truth, and she felt like a rebel in those standards. She didn't want to get married and serve a man. She wanted to study, be her own person, smoke and drink beer. She could hide her smoking and drinking, but her unwillingness to get married and her investment in her studies were in plain sight. And it was enough for her to be considered a black sheep, but not to her father. She was his favorite daughter and her father was her everything. And by losing him, she lost her ground. She wanted to disappear. It came the time for her to eat from other cultures. She went to the Amazon as part of a student program of the current government, a military dictatorship. She hated the dictatorship, but she thought she might as well take advantage of the free trip. The military lifestyle she had to face in the settlement she stayed was the first new thing she digested. What came of it was an even bigger taste for freedom. Soon, she learned there is no such thing as a free trip. She had to interview indigenous people who lived in the area to report their lifestyles and needs. Her provincial shame had a hard time adjusting to the minimalist fashion choices of the indigenous. Some used clothes from her culture but they had no problem in exposing any parts of their bodies in public. It took some adjustment for her to treat others' nudity with some naturality. She faced a holistic culture that had little individuality and saw everyone and everything as connected. She witnessed burial services that, judging by her culture standards, were disrespectful. She saw their lives through their, her own lenses until she was able to adapt and see things as they would. It's not an easy task. And she's not entirely successful, because no one is, but enough to understand that their choices and lifestyles make sense in their own culture. And that her culture, with its own truths, was just a culture. We need to face others to understand who we are. Just looking in will give you a few answers, but sometimes many frustrations. She needed to see the nudity, the relationships, the deaths, the lives, to understand that she wasn't flawed. She was simply different from the environment that she was in. By discovering others, she discovered herself. And she was ready to own it uncensored. Then it comes to the silver lining of death. The fear of disappointing someone we love is paralyzing. And she feared disappointing her father. She loved the version, he loved the version of her that she presented to him, but she was afraid that she would cross a line by revealing her full self. Losing him meant losing so much, but losing him also meant not having any more restraints about herself. As Julian Barnes says, every love story is a potential grief story. And the story of a daughter's love is no different. The Amazon didn't cure her grief. Truth is, nothing does, not even time. Grief is always there. We learn how to live with it and nothing more. Aroi Mayu is a story of all that. Uh, 
Aroi Mayibu comes from the Bororo language, which is a tribe in Brazil, and it means new soul. It comes from the burial ritual that the Bororo faced. It's a very complex thing. And yeah, it's a person who um, is chosen in the tribe to represent the deceased. Sure. Uh, well, the idea for it came from my mother's photograph album that, uh, like, I, I saw that many times, but it took me a long time to actually realize that she also took a trip when her father died, as I had taken a trip when my mother died, and, like, there were so many coincidences to that uh, that I, I, I also, like, wanted to, to like, think about how this trip changed her as my trip changed me. Um, and the format was just about like how, what is the best way to tell the story? And I thought that videos, like images, uh, found images to talk about memories and to actually reshape memories like I was already doing with her photo album. And I'm like reshaping those videos that were found of indigenous people and like also reshaping some meanings of um, works of art that describe the Brazilian culture. So yeah, that's how I came to it. Oh yeah, I went to archive.org and that was a tip from Shannon. And I was very lucky to find like all this uh, uh, sh uh, shootings and they were basically all done by the same person like not all of them like, but like most of them and then I just it they were all from the University of Pennsylvania so I just reached out to them and was like oh I'm doing this project um, can I use it and they said yeah sure That was pretty cool. Um, like, they were way more open than I expected. Uh, I reached out to people who studied the Bororo tribe, and I was just like, hey, I'm doing a film about this. Um, can you help me? And like some of the footage that I use, uh, I actually found through one of the anthropologists. Like, she was just like, she answered me the same day. She was like, yeah, you should look up into this and this, like, so you can find it. And, like, I, ha I have, like, we have a, a foundation in, in Brazil for the indigenous tribes. So I talked a lot to them to, like, also reach out to people. And, like, they have all this information about the, the Brazilian tribes, which is also available in English. So you can all take a look in that, into that. Um, so yeah, it was actually a really like great experience. Uh, it was not my first multimedia project. Uh, I usually like I I have some experience with HTML and CSS, but I may I majorly use like resources. Like for this project, I'm using ReadyMag. Uh, for other projects, I used Echo Studio too, it, which is basically just for videos. Uh, there are like some resources available online that will help people with no or very little like experience with websites. But I also rely a lot in a friend of mine that actually has a lot of experience in that. So whenever I want to do something really crazy that the website does not allow me, like he really helps me. So 